from the South Point studio. Whoa. The perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. Comedy. See over under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. A real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look at the clock? I... Ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, especially a Adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org. The following is a Race Day Las Vegas presentation in association with Sirocco Productions Limited on the Race Day Las Vegas Radio Network. Live from the gaming capital of the world, time for Race Day Las Vegas, covering the sport of kings with a Las Vegas perspective. Now to the race desk with your host, Ralph Sirocco. From the backstretch to the turf club, at the race books and on the internet, to all horse players around the world, a good morning. All righty, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Race Day Las Vegas radio program. And if you're watching on the South Point Studios network feed at YouTube, you can see already the sports book is packed. We've got more than two hours before the first of the uh, just the array of games that happened today in the first day of the NCAA basketball tournament gets underway. And this book is humming and hopping, that's for sure. We welcome you to the Race Day Las Vegas radio program for this almost Friday, Thursday. We come to you live and direct from this gaming capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, right here at our studio station at the South Point Studios at the South Point Hotel Casino here on Las Vegas Boulevard, your fabulous strip for day one of the NCAA College Basketball Championship. And man, I'm telling you, it is just starting and it is percolating out there. These guys are getting ready for some good, great basketball coverage from college football, that's for sure. We'll have Rich Ang coming to us a little bit later on, give us uh, his thoughts about uh, this day one where there'll be 16 teams playing uh, today and then 16 more tomorrow to whittle it on down uh, to the Elite Eight by the time the weekend is over. But we got today, tomorrow, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, I want to tell everybody about what's happening here at the, uh, at the South Point for the big tournament. As you can see, the book is already full, but they have the huge exhibit hall upstairs open. I walked through it. 
yesterday. Huge, big exorb, ex, uh, room that's going to f seat maybe anywhere from uh, 1,800 to 2,000 people there today. And there's big banquet tables so you can spread out all your, uh, you know, your betting paraphernalia, etc. cetera. Uh, quite a few uh, seats. I think it's between 8 to, to 12 seats per uh, table. And it's uh, called March Mayhem here, March Madness Mayhem here. Uh, you got 12 uh, big screen TVs, free entry, free parking, etc. And uh, it's going to be today, tomorrow, and Saturday. A lot of betting windows, food and drink specials. It's called the most massive madness party here in Vegas, and it's here at the South Point today, tomorrow, and Saturday up in the big exhibit hall. You can get here, uh, get here early, get your seats. You know, if you got a group of guys, a group of friends that are going to watch these games all day, well, uh, you know, the guy who draw, draws the short straws, the guy that's got to come out here early enough to get that table for all of his buddies to join him later because this action will start uh, just about uh, two hours from now when they tip off at uh, 9 and change Pacific time here in Las Vegas, but the book is already hopping, that's for sure. Now, as far as horse racing is concerned, yeah, this is the Race Day Las Vegas show, so we want to welcome everybody that's watching us on YouTube on the South Point Studio Streaming Network, and of course, if you're watching us for the first time, do your do us a big favor in yourself and uh, hit the subscribe. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and you'll get all set and ready to go. Also, we have many different platforms that we bring you this race day show every day, and we like to welcome all those people each and every day at the beginning of our show. I know sometimes it gets repetitious, but there's a lot of people that are jumping on uh, for the first time, so we'd like to welcome them as well on the many different platforms that we have. That include, of course, here at YouTube with the South Point Studio Streaming Network. And, of course, if you're running around town trying to get here, uh, to the uh, South Point for some March Madness action here. You might be listening to us on our anchor home station here in Las Vegas, Sports Talk 1400 AM, 107.1 FM. And, of course, we cover the world on our many feeds on the Internet, like the streaming we have at the RacedayLasVegas.com websites, RacedayLasVegas.com, .vegas .world .global. We stream there as well, and we also have archive uh, archiving on our websites. And, of course, uh, you know, without your device, your iPhone or your Android, Android, we can't live without. So we got uh, ways of getting it too. We got apps on the Androids and the iPhones. You got the KSHP radio app that you can have to listen to us. And you also have your YouTube app that you can not only listen to us, but watch us here on the South Point uh, Network feed on YouTube as well. And of course, uh, anywhere you get your podcasting or there as well. So however, wherever, whenever, Welcome to the Race Day Show for this almost Friday, Thursday, day one of March Madness Mayhem. And boy, I got, got to tell you, it's going to be a lot of fun mixing basketball and horse racing all day long. You have people that will be uh, moving from the uh, sports book to the race book and back and forth. This is the only, the only property in Las Vegas with all these big mega properties. This is the only property that separates the sports and horses which means if you're a horse player and you know you're going to go out somewhere today and the book is going to be screaming and yelling for all the baskets and the three-pointers and the buzzer beaters, but you still want to concentrate on horse racing, this is the place to do it today. Come to the South Point, the race book, adjacent as it is to the sports book, but it is separated. So there'll be uh, plenty of action in the sports book today for horse players. And, of course, if you want to venture over and take a look at a little bit of a basketball game here or there, the sports book is right here. It's behind the studio, uh, and the, uh, the race book is to the left of our studio as you're looking out. That's for sure. Uh, it's a perfect setup here at the South Point, and everything is free up until your first bet. Park free, get in free, sit free. And, uh, like I said, food and drink uh, uh, deals as well all over the place. It's going to be great. Anyhow, right now here in Las Vegas, getting warmer in, this, in the mornings. It's 56 degrees right now here in Las Vegas. Here's the way it's going to roll out this weekend in case you're planning on, on coming up for the weekend. 56 right now. We're going to get up to 79 degrees today here in Las Vegas with plenty of sunshine, okay? Tomorrow, Friday, we'll top out at 78 degrees. On Saturday, it's going to be windy out here, and the temperatures are going to drop a little. We're going to get to 68 degrees as our high on Saturday with a little wind. But if you're inside the book, no problem. Fast, firm, and perfect here. And uh, on Sunday, because of the wind coming in and the cold front that will follow it, 
Uh, Sunday will top off at 61 degrees. So it's going to be perfect weather out here, that's for sure. The weather we are worrying about right now is the weather in New Orleans down there at the Gulf of, uh, you know, Mexico in there. Because in New Orleans, uh, the fairgrounds has a big racing day coming up on Saturday. You have eight races, eight stakes races on Saturday at the fairgrounds. Uh, four grade twos, uh, uh, four others. And amongst them will be uh, the, uh, the Louisiana Derby that has 100 points for the Kentucky Derby leaderboard. You also have the Fairgrounds Oaks. That will be 100 points for the Kentucky Oaks leaderboard. And, of course, at Turfway Park, which is right outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, and Florence, Kentucky, up there in, the, uh, in that northern region there of the Midwest, uh, there will be six stakes races at Turfway Park on Saturday, uh, two grade threes, and four more other stakes races on the card that include the Jack Ruby Stakes, which is a 100-point getter for the Kentucky Derby leaderboard there, and, of course, the Bourbonette Oaks, which is a 50-point getter for the Kentucky Oaks. Now, what we're going to do is uh, tomorrow we're going to go over some of the undercard stakes races and the two Oaks preps with Jonathan Ardoon on the Friday show, and then on Saturday, of course, we'll concentrate on only, not only the uh, uh, Louisiana uh, Derby, but of course uh, the Jack Ruby stakes for the Kentucky Derby horses, that's for sure. As far as the Kentucky Derby horses are concerned now, uh, we have uh, Timberlake, who is now pointing for the Arkansas Derby. Doorknock will be pointing for the Florida Derby. We have either that or the Bluegrass. The connections at Doorknock are not sure yet, but they're opting for either the Florida Derby, which comes up uh, a week from Saturday, or the bluegrass that will be part of the uh, opening there at, uh, at uh, Keeneland when that opens up a little bit later on. So those two races are con under consideration for the final prep for Doorknock for the Kentucky Derby. Uh, like I said, Timberlake, his uh, final prep for the Kentucky Derby will be the Arkansas Derby at Oaklawn Park, which will also happen a week from Saturday out. Uh, Stronghold, the, the horse in Southern California, will uh, point for the uh, Santa Anita Derby. Conquest Warrior is now on schedule to join Fierceness in, and Hades in uh, the uh, Florida Derby. So th that Florida Derby is starting to come together there at uh, Gulfstream Park, that's for sure. Want to mention a few other uh, notes before we get to our first break. That important California horse racing meeting is today to decide whether Pleasanton in Northern California will get a 26-day meet to run thoroughbreds up there. As you know, the ownership of uh, Santa Anita First Racing, which also owned Golden Gate, has clo they've closed, they're closing down Golden Gate. It's going to be gone. So the Northern California horsemen are trying to get together and put a, a little bit of a racing meet together to be hosted at Pleasanton, Pleasanton Racecourse. Now, again, uh, the only race course in Northern California during the fair circuit that has a turf course, of course, is Santa Rosa. Pleasanton does not, but it's a beautiful place, and it's a great town to be racing in, that's for sure. So they're going to try to get a 26-day meet approved today at the California Horse Racing Board. However, uh, you know, first racing, uh, they have decided, uh, and I'd, it's not so much a threat or maybe gamesmanship. We don't know, but they did state, and they sent the letter to the California Horse Racing Board, that if they go ahead and approve the Pleasanton racing, then they are in jeopardy of uh, seeing Santa Anita close. This was the, I don't know if it was a veiled threat or not, but this was, uh, you know, what was presented to them. So that's going to be a tricky situation today. It's going to happen in the California Horse Racing Board uh, today, and we'll, of course, have the latest from that from John Leno. Can you imagine closing down Santa Anita now? Come on. In any case, that is, uh, the, that's the chess game they're playing right now with the California Horse Racing Board, so we'll wait and see about that. Jockey Joel Rosario, who's been uh, kind of in and out, but uh, has his tack laid down in Southern California this winter through this, uh, this uh, springtime. By the way, we're already in spring, so happy spring, everybody. Uh, he uh, is uh, going to be leaving Santa Anita as far as, uh, uh, you know, settling there in the jockey colony. Uh, he is 11th right now in the jockey standings at Santa Anita. He's going to go to the fairgrounds, of course, this weekend for the big races there, and then he's going to move on. Uh, to uh, uh, Gulfstream Park and then uh, Keeneland as well. So uh, Joel Rosario will not be riding on a regular basis in Southern California anymore. And an important retirement, Jerry Melanson, Gerald Melanson as they call him, but we call him Jerry Melanson. He's been riding 
horses for 40 years. 40 years, Jerry Malone's son has been riding. His career will come to an end on Sunday at the fairgrounds. He's, he's got over 5,000 career victories, 5,117 as we count. He's 56 years old, and Jerry Malonson has been a staple in, in the South for many, many years. And uh, a, a quality guy and a great rider, Jerry Malonson is going to hang up the tack after uh, Sunday at uh, the fairgrounds. In addition to that, Declan Carroll, who's much younger, but Declan Carroll will also uh, end his career on Sunday at the fairgrounds as well. He is going to move into other aspects of uh, the racing industry away from riding horses. So uh, those two guys will be uh, say, saying their swan song on Sunday at the fairgrounds. And so we'll, we'll wait and see about that. Want to give you one more a reminder for all of this stuff we're talking about, the Derby, etc. When March Madness is over, come the uh, first weekend in April, then our attentions and uh, most of everybody's attentions uh, outside of horse racing will start to be generating towards the Kentucky Derby, which of course is the first Saturday in May. So on that weekend, we're going to have our annuals here at the South Point. We'll have our annual Kentucky Derby seminar. That will happen on Friday, May 3rd, the first Friday in May. That is, of course, Kentucky Oaks Day. There'll be the Kentucky Oaks program, of course. We'll watch all those races and take notes on the Kentucky Oaks and those races, etc. And then after the uh, Southern California racing card is over, right around 6 o'clock in the evening, we will be doing our annual Kentucky Derby seminar with Jonathan Hardoon coming in from the east and uh, John Lendo, of course, coming here from Southern California. So we're going to have east-west kind of a perspective on the Kentucky Derby. That seminar, and I'll be hosting it, will be in the Grand View Lounge. Now, the Grand View Lounge is right adjacent to the, uh, the race book here at the South Point, but it's a lounge that is set up for evening entertainment. So you're going to enjoy yourself by sitting there and enjoying the seminar. We'll be on stage, and there'll be uh, those uh, tables, et cetera, for, for that there in the Grand View Lounge. That happens at 6 o'clock Friday night, May 3rd, after the Kentucky Oaks uh, racing card there. Then the next day, Kentucky Derby Day. We'll be do doing what uh, they do now for March Madness, what they have done for the Super Bowl, and what they will be doing for the Kentucky uh, Derby. The big ballroom upstairs here at the South Point with, uh, you know, plenty of seating, you know, over a 1,000 seats, et cetera, up there, will be set up similar to what uh, they're set up right now as they had for the Super Bowl and for uh, the March Madness there. They're going to have it all set up there with big, big banquet tables so you can spread out all your racing forms, et cetera, uh, between 8 to uh, 12 seats per table so you can bring your friends and watch and celebrate the Kentucky Derby. You'll have food and drink uh, discounts and food and drink deals. Uh, and, of course, there'll be a bank of betting windows uh, to watch and play the races. There'll be a lot of little TV sets amongst all the big screen ones for the Kentucky, uh, for the signal from Churchill Downs that day. Those little ones, of course, will have also be offering all of the racing around the country on that day as well. So you can play the races at other tracks and, of course, uh, on Churchill Downs and the Kentucky Derby Day card as well. And, of course, uh, there'll be some uh, promotions up there. I know they had a hat contest a couple of years ago, and, and yeah, uh, they had one last year. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun watching uh, some of the ladies come in with their, their hats for the hat contest there. Just a lot of promotion, a lot of things going on for the Kentucky Derby. That'll happen on Saturday, Derby Day, uh, the Saturday, uh, May 4th. Now, what we're going to do here at Race Day, as we did for the Breeders' Cup, is on the Thursday night before the seminar, before the Kentucky Derby Day, on that Thursday night at around 5 p.m. Pacific time, I'm going to be hosting... Uh, hopefully uh, Jonathan Hardoon and John Lendo and uh, some other guests we have lined up will be hosting a uh, Kentucky Derby preview show here only, only at the South Point Studio feed on, uh, on YouTube. So um, you might want, if you haven't uh, tried us out on YouTube yet, you might want to try that out before then because that Friday night at 5 p.m., the only way you're going to get us, that we had no other simulcasting except through the South Point uh, Studios Network uh, streaming at YouTube, okay? And that'll be Friday night. We're going to go over the Kentucky Oaks Day card, which will be the next day. So you got the, uh, the special Kentucky Derby Day, Kentucky Oaks Day show on Thursday at 5 p.m. That is, of course, on the uh, second 
of uh, May. On the 3rd of May, we'll be doing the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Kentucky Derby Seminar in the Grand View Lounge after the uh, races are over on uh, that Friday, the uh, 3rd of uh, May, and then on the 4th of May, the Kentucky Derby up in the ballroom. All of this great stuff. We invite you to come and join us on all these functions because for you, it's free. All of the functions, uh, functions I just said are all free from the time you park your car until the time you make your first bet here at the South Point because they love horse players. And, of course, John Lindo's Lindo Report will be here as well. We'll tap uh, Jonathan Hardoon on it on a little bit up there in the ballroom, maybe give us a horse or two before the Kentucky Derby, even then. All right. A lot to do, I understand, but uh, I wanted just to get all of that out as we uh, start our big March Madness uh, th thrust throughout the weekend here. It's going to be a great time here at the South Point. We invite you to come on and join us here for uh, some great uh, basketball, some great horse racing, etc. Enough said. we got to get started on the race day show. We've got, of course, Jonathan Hardoon standing by with us, Rich Ang. He's going to be looking at the uh, first uh, round of uh, brackets uh, for the uh, NCAA tournament today. And, of course, John Lindo will give us the latest on the Southern California situation. And Jerry Jackowitz will be here with his picks for Aqueduct as well. So with any further ado, we're going to our first break on this almost Friday, Thursday. Don't go away. And remember... If you're at the South Point Studio feed at YouTube, subscribe. We'll be right back. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. From the South Point studio, <laughs> the perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. <laughs> Comedy. It's the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. Oh, real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look at the clock? I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. Alrighty, back on Race Day Las Vegas for this almost uh, Friday, Thursday, and of course the first day of the NCAA, and uh, the things are really hopping behind us, I could tell you that right now. If we can get another shot maybe at uh, what's going on in the uh, sports book right now behind us, you can see that the crowd is real. Look at this. I mean, the crowd is just, and, and we're, we're uh, two hours away from the first tip-off. And of course, when this gets full at the uh, South Point uh, sports book behind us, the big ballroom will uh, start filling up with people as well. It's going to be a heck of a day. All right, time to get started with the uh, racing menu of racetracks available today in our sports book here. And, of course, the first post times we uh, – our race book, I should say. The sports book's already full. On our race book, we got uh, the uh, racing going on there. So here's the uh, main menu of racetracks available today. In uh, these race books uh, here all over town, but spe especially here at the uh, South Point race book, first post times, we're in the Pacific time zone, so the first post times will be in the uh, Pacific time zone. But remember, uh, if you're listening out there in many other time zones, just adjust to the first uh, post times uh, in the Pacific time zone so you don't miss anything. Like, of course, I miss mom and dad, okay? Here's the menu for today. We begin with Gulfstream Park. Now, Gulfstream Park uh, they have that pick six jackpot climbing. You remember the mandatory payoff last week, but it's already at 400000 The Gulfstream Park Rainbow pick six jackpot carryover for today stands at $406,424. $406,420. First post time at Gulfstream for nine races is set at 10 10 10 10 at Gulfstream today. Then we go to Aqueduct, the Big A in New York. Aqueduct has eight races, their first post time at the Big A. Uh, is at uh, 10:20. 10:20 at Aqueduct today. 
Oak Lawn Park, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Oak Lawn Park has nine races. Their first post time is 10.30. 10.30 at Oak Lawn Park. By the way, uh, uh, John Lendo's Lendo report today is uh, focused on Oak Lawn Park. He has an Oak Lawn Park Lendo report here, only exclusive at the South Point Racebook today. Oak Lawn Park, first post time for nine races set at 10.30. Then we go to the fairgrounds in New Orleans. Now, the fairgrounds, of course, as you know, uh, the big racing day is coming up a day after uh, tomorrow, and we're concentrating on uh, the weather reports down there. We'll wait and see about the weather reports. Today, Fairgrounds has nine races, and uh, their first post time at the Fairgrounds is set at 1045, 1045 at the Fairgrounds. Sunland Park kicks in with nine races. They're all thoroughbred races today at Sunland. Sunland Park's first post time is at 1125. They have a small regular pick five carryover at Sunland. Uh, that carryover is uh, $683, $683 in the uh, regular pick five carryover at Sunland. First post time, 1125 Then we go out to Turf Paradise in Phoenix, Arizona. Their pick six jackpot carryover is $77,879. They've got nine races. First two races will be quarter horses. Races three through nine will be thoroughbreds. First post time is at one twenty-five at Turf Paradise today. Turfway Park. Remember, they got the big Jack Ruby stakes uh, on Saturday and a whole bunch of stakes races there at Turfway. Turfway has eight races today, and their first post time at Turfway Park. They got a couple of carryovers there. Their pick six jackpot carryover at Turfway Park is at uh, $23,121. The Super High Five, this is, not a, uh, this is not a jackpot, a regular Super High Five carryover at Turfway Park is set at $23,618. They've got eight races today at Turfway and a first post time at $255. Then we'll roll to Penn National. Penn National has a super high five jackpot carryover, $14,022. First post time is 3 p.m. at uh, Penn National. And then we have Charlestown Racecourse. Charlestown Races wraps it up. Their pick six jackpot carryover, $49,306. Eight races at Charlestown in the first post time of 4 p.m. That's your racing menu for this almost Friday, Thursday. And remember, uh, Mahoning Valley Racecourse is not racing today. They had a lack of entries, so they couldn't run as they were scheduled for today. Uh, we'll pick them up next week, that's for sure. Let's get out the Jonathan Hardoon standing by on the East Coast. Uh, Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. It's freezing here today. Really? <laughs> it's a, yeah, it warmed up the last couple of days today. It's like in the 30s. Too wow. cold. All right. Well, we're getting uh, we're getting a little uh, warm front coming through here. We're going to get up to almost 80, 79 degrees today. So it's going to be perfect out there. And uh, but then we dip uh, we dip down to 61 by the time we get to Sunday because uh, Saturday we're going to have some wind whipping through here. But as I say, it's always fast, firm, and perfect in the race and sports books. And I guarantee you, this week all the folks will be either in the race book or the sports book. That's for sure. We of course concentrate on racing, but uh, we're also sports fans, so it's going to be a lot of fun watching all that basketball activity throughout the day as well. And uh, for us, again, here at the uh, South Point, they're separated, so you'll, you'll be able to, within walking distance, uh, you know, be able to get to the, uh, the books back and forth, but uh, it won't be overpowering if you're trying to watch and bet horses, which we will because they got a couple of big uh, cards at the fairgrounds and at uh, Turfway Park. I might have asked you this a couple of other uh, days ago, but I'll ask you again. Now, I know you're going to be doing uh, fairgrounds. Is that not right? You're going to do a fairground sheet tomorrow? I mean, yeah, on, on Saturday. Do. Yeah, they have eight stake races. You know, by the way, they're expecting bad weather, uh, yeah. I guess, today and tomorrow. But hopefully by Saturday it all clears out and uh, they get to run over a good track. Yeah, I'm hoping so I'm hoping that the know. front uh, keeps, uh, you know, its uh, speed and we'll try to get through. We know it's coming through there. But what we don't want is it slowing down and coming through on Saturday. We want to get it in and out and through on Friday, it depends on how much rain there is there in uh, versus and, of course, uh, in consideration of the uh, turf races. But I think no matter how much rain they get there overnight, if it's uh, clear on Saturday and it starts drying out and, you know, they'll work the track trying to get that thing uh, as fast as they can, as soon as they can, as far as the main track is concerned. But I think on the turf courses, uh, Jonathan, I think they will keep the stakes races that are set for the turf course right. on the turf course. It'll just be you know, off going, maybe a good labeled good. 
If you remember their last big day they had there, they had weather issues also. And uh, you're right, the track for the most part was pretty good. And they, they did leave the stake races on the grass and they took the other ones off. Well, uh, you know, uh, we've got uh, we're we're into the realm now with the hundred point getters for the uh, Kentucky Derby leaderboard, and of course, uh, the Kentucky Oaks. We got uh, the the uh, Fairgrounds Oaks going to be a hundred points for the Kentucky Oaks, and uh, you know, there's not so much talk about the uh, the Phillies this year for the Kentucky Oaks, but it's a big race for them. It's just like the Kentucky Derby, uh, and very few times we've ever seen a Philly. In the Kentucky Derby, I think there's been three Phillies uh, winning the Kentucky Derby, starting out with Regret, and then you had Genuine Risk, and then Winning Colors. As a matter of fact, uh, talking about Genuine Risk, uh, she is the only Philly to race in the Kentucky Derby. And, of course, there's only been three of them, but the, she was the only Philly in the Kentucky uh, Derby in the Triple Crown to finish first or second in all Triple Crown races. She really was some, some type of Philly, wasn't she? Yeah, but we're not going to see that, unfortunately, anymore no. because the Phillies can't get points. So how are they going to get into the Derby? I guess if there's a Philly good enough to run against the boys in some of these races where they give points, but for the most part, if you have a good Philly, you're going to keep her against Phillies. And, uh, you know, the next time we see a Philly in the, in the Kentucky Derby may be a long time away. That is absolutely correct. But like you said, if you think you want to, you have a good Philly, you know, a great Philly, and you say, listen, it's – we think we can take on the boys early in the, in the going. Uh, they can they can run in those races and, and get the Kentucky Derby points in those uh, races there, but uh, they, they can't transfer Kentucky Oaks points over the Kentucky Derby. Right. But uh, you know, uh, whoever wins the uh, the uh, Fairgrounds Oaks on uh, Saturday is going to get a, a big leg up. That's a hundred points. Yeah, well, if you have a Philly that you think is a special Philly, mm -hmm. maybe you'll take a shot in one of the 100-point races because if you run first or second, chances are you'll have enough points to get into the Derby. So, you know, you have to have a Philly that good and think that you have a legitimate shot. Otherwise, you would just run against the Phillies and, uh, you know, nothing wrong with winning the Kentucky Oaks. No, that's a very important race to win, that's for sure. But we know one guy, one guy we know for sure – that would run a Philly against the boys, and that's the coach, D. Wayne Lucas. He did it with winning colors successfully, I might add. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Well, uh, you know, we're coming into the nitty-gritty now because uh, this weekend are those races, and then, of course, on March 30th is, uh, you know, the, uh, the Florida Derby. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, the Arkansas Derby. you got the UAE Derby on Dubai World Cup Day, which is a week from Saturday, we start early in the morning there with the big Dubai World Cup. Um, you know, I haven't uh, paid uh, too much of attention to uh, what's going on with the Dubai World Cup uh, with the field there, but I know the first and second place finishers in the uh, Saudi Cup are, have moved on to Dubai. They're already training there at Maydown uh, Racecourse. Yeah, they are. And uh, listen, you get invited to run in a $20 million stake race, you're going to run in it. So why not? Well, the uh, Dubai World Cup, of course, is not twenty million dollars, but uh, Buscador has already taken care of that. Buscador already took care of that. I think it's a ten million dollar race. Excuse me. Yeah, you know, I mean, come on. Yeah. But with inflation, you probably need it to be twenty million. In any case, uh, that of course is a week from Saturday, but we're going to have a, a lot of great racing going on this weekend, uh, etc. That's for sure. Uh, well, Jonathan, your horses were live yesterday, and I thought we were really going to get the money at that, that race at uh, Tampa Bay. But just in the shadow of the wire as we were getting to the lead, here comes some horse that was barreling on the outside, and his final lunge and, and his final two strides got there, uh, beat you. But, boy, you were right on the money with that horse. Well, let's see if we could do a little better today and turn that second and third into a couple of winners. Let's look at Aqueduct first, third race today. Six furlongs on the main track, and Ralph, to be totally honest with you, slim pickings today at Aqueduct. Again, a lot of short field, short price horses, but I found a uh, a diamond in the rough here. Let's look at the third race, and I like the number five horse, Teresa. This is a four-year-old filly from the Oscar Barrera barn. She's had excuses in her last two races. Go back to a sprint races as a three-year-old, and they're good enough to get the job done here. She gets Lasix today for the first time. She's in light. She gets weight from the rest of the group. Again, she's listed at 8-1 to one on the morning line. Jose powered Das aboard to ride. Number five, Teresa upsets and wins today's third race out at Aqueduct. 
Third race at Aqueduct, the third race, the five, Teresa, the five in the third race, a nice juicy eight to one if we can keep it there, that's for sure. Might with that jockey, you know anything about the jock? Yeah, he's an apprentice. He's only got a couple of wins. He's not so bad. He's learning on the job. <laughs> well, does uh, Teresa have early speed? No, she doesn't, but okay. she won't be that far out of it. And uh, listen, the races he's won, by the way, he did win both of those races coming off the pace. Oh, good. So that, right. yeah. So he does have a little sense of judgment in, in, in the race, and that's always good. So the third race, the five, number five in the third race at Aqueduct, as uh, Jonathan says, a diamond in the rough. Let's uh, shine it up and get a winner there in the third race, the five horse at Aqueduct. Where else? Let's go to Gulfstream. Look at race number four, a mile and 70 yards on the Tapita, and number seven, battling bubbles. Only five to two on the morning line. However, this is a pick five, pick four, and pick six single. Rider switch today to Louis Sayas. Jeff Howell sends out this improving four year old Philly. Graduation day today. Number seven, battling bubbles, wins today's fourth race out at Gulfstream. All right, the fourth race at Gulfstream. So we're giving us horses that are early in the uh, in the cards there. And remember, those are East Coast tracks, so the uh, first post times will be early. In the uh, fourth race at Gulfstream, you like the seven battling bubbles. Uh, the seven in the fourth race there with Luis Saez aboard at Gulfstream Park. Full sheets for both uh, Gulfstream and Aqueduct today and Oakland Park, correct? Correct. Okay. Those are three tracks today available right at his website. Tell them, Jonathan. J-O-N-H-A-R-D-O-O-N dot com. Thank you, Ralph. Stay safe and be well, and we'll talk tomorrow. You got it, my man. All right. We continue here as the uh, sports book is filling up behind us for March Men as we continue from the South Point Studios here where all the action is. Come on down. We'll be right back with Rich Yang standing by, and he's going to give us a little insight on maybe what's happening in the games today. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, especially at Adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. Alrighty, back on Race Day Las Vegas, and uh, as you might expect, uh, more people are showing up in the sports book here at the uh, South Point for the big tip-off in uh, March Madness, and of course, a uh, whole bunch of games today. We now go our, go to our man that's uh, right on top of all this stuff, and that is, of course, Rich Ang. Richie, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ralphie. It looks like it's a lot more... Uh, quiet where you're at than it is behind us here that's for sure in the uh, sports book but I got to tell you uh, things are really starting to hop here and I know that uh, what did we got we got 16 games today yeah you've got the first round which is 16 games 32 teams and then identical tomorrow mm -hmm. and uh, by uh, Friday night half the field will be eliminated in the tournament and by the end of the first of four days of this competition Sunday we will have what, we, what they call the elite eight right no, Sweet 16. Oh, Sweet 16. I'm sorry. That's right. The Elite Eight uh, starts on next uh, Saturday, from a week from Saturday. That's right. There's so many teams. Correct. 
in any case, you're keeping track of it for us, that's for sure. Uh, we got uh, games that are going to be going all day today. As I look at the uh, sheet here, the first game's going to tip off as Duquesne and uh, BYU at 9.40 a.m. Pacific time this morning, and it'll be nonstop until the uh, final tip-off of the evening, which is uh, 7.05 p.m. with Drake and Washington State. So it's going to be a busy day. How do you see it today? Well, you know, one thing that I had mentioned uh, uh, more than once, Ralph, on the show with you the last uh, couple of weeks is at this time of year, the bookmakers have such great uh, uh, figures, uh, algorithms on these teams that these lines are really, really tight. This is actually a, a really difficult time of year a bit because uh, the bookmakers are so accurate at this point. But, uh, uh, you know, just a couple of quick notes before I give individual games, Ralph, is, uh, uh, you know, the Big East only has three teams in. But there are three really good ones uh, in UConn, Marquette, and Creighton. Mm -hmm. One, two, and a three seed. I wish there was a prop out there about the three Big East teams making the Final Four like back in 1985. Because yeah. I would bet it. If it was like 100 to 1, I would I would put a $20 bill on it. I know one conference that uh, they really love is the Big 12. Mm -hmm. Eight teams from the Big 12 came in. And uh, a conference I think I'm going to try to fade is the ACC. Uh, that started on uh, one of the play-in games, if you bet against Virginia. But uh, I'm going to fade the ACC. It looked like a weak conference this year. Okay. Well, let's get started with a, uh, a pick or two today. Well, let's go with game number 734 on the rotation, uh, Texas Tech against NC State. And, again, uh, NC State is part of the uh, Atlantic Coast Conference. So I'm going to try to fade them with Texas Tech out of the Big 12. Four-and-a-half-point favorites, Texas Tech. They play a, they're a big physical team that mm – -hmm. uh, really uh, just pounds you, especially inside. So let's go with the Texas Tech Red Raiders, minus four and a half over NC State. All right, folks, that is bet number 734 on the uh, rotation, and it'll uh, tip off approximately 6.40 p.m. Pacific time on CBS. Next. I have a, a second uh, game we'll give out for the NCAA tournament. It's game 742. It's the very first game. It's BYU against Duquesne. I know uh, BYU is a big favorite at nine and a half, but they made the transition to the Big 12, and they did extremely well uh, playing a physical style in, in that conference. Duquesne, Ralph, is this is their first NCAA appearance since 1977, wow. 47 years. I really think they have a chance to kind of get intimidated by the bright lights. Uh, they were not expected to get here. So let's try BYU uh, minus nine and a half, their game 742. All right, that is the early tip-off game today that starts the whole madness and mayhem started. 9.40 a.m. Pacific time. That'll be on the True Network if you're going to watch it from home and play on your South Point uh, sports app. Uh, Duquesne started out as an eight-point favorite. That was the, the line that they hung out at the start. And you can see that the public is, um, or the betting uh, public, certainly is uh, siding with uh, Richie with Duquesne in that game. Whole lot more to go, Richie. That's for sure. Uh, do you have a horse pick for us today? Yeah, let's uh, give out a quick pick uh, in horse racing. Go to Turfway Park, race number five. I like the nine horse, Sands of War. This horse shipping in for trainer Sherry DeVoe has been facing much tougher at Saratoga and Gulfstream Park, and now goes to Turfway for the Tapita. So uh, three to one in the morning line, number nine, Sands of War, race five, Turfway. All right, number nine uh, in the uh, fifth race at Turfway, the nine horse there. And, of course, Richie, you'll be back with your uh, Southern California sheet at the RacedayLasVegas.com website tomorrow morning, and uh, you'll have a full sheet for that as well. And some more picks, uh, certainly in uh, college uh, hoops. I know that you gave two selections out today, but of the all the 16 games that are going today, which one is the one that you really want to get the front and center to watch it but a little popcorn? Well, you know, there's just some unbelievable matchups. I, I tell you what, uh, uh, the two teams that came out of the uh, the, the, uh, the uh, West Coast Conference, mm -hmm. Gonzaga and St. Mary's, I'm real interested to see how they play. I thought they were kind of uh, underseeded, Ralph, that they were a little better than uh, the committee gave them credit for. So I'm, I want to watch the Gonzaga-McNeese State game real close because this Gonzaga team in past years has been like a one or a two seed and they folded late. Mm -hmm. uh, this team comes in with no pressure, and they're a real good ball club, so I'm real interested in watching Gonzaga play. Yeah, okay, and that'll be a fun game because McNeese State, a lot of people think that they are a, a really good team this year and has matched up well with Gonzaga, and that'll go at 425 this afternoon on TBS. 
Pacific time. Hey, thanks a lot, Richie. Uh, get your get your breakfast, lunch, and dinner ready for in front of the TV set uh, for basketball. A little horse racing, obviously. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, thanks, Ralph. Good luck, everybody. All right, we're going to wrap it up here with uh, John and Jerry. Don't go away. we got to get the latest from John Lindo on the feelings of this big California horse racing board meeting that happens today. Ooh, we'll be right back. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. The Race Day Las Vegas Show, the only exclusive daily local media racing information source in Las Vegas. All righty. Don't forget, folks, we got a lot of great programming coming up uh, here on the uh, South Point uh, Studios Network on YouTube, keeping track of all what's going on behind us in the sports book. And, of course, uh, the uh, Sports by the Book is uh, changing their hours a little bit in accommodate, to accommodate all the action behind us. Sports by the Book today, tomorrow, and Saturday will go on from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. They're going to be on a half an hour after we're done, so stay right there. Sports by the book. They'll keep you up to date on what's going on. And uh, later on today, Gone Racing will be here with all the action for auto racing at 10 a.m. And, of course, Punchlines, well, you know, Frank Nicotero will be here at uh, noon to 1 o'clock. My understanding is that uh, the, the crew here did a, um, a selection for the brackets, and they're actually got their selection for the brackets out here in the book. And people can bet on each individual person in that to see who's going to win that here at the South Point. My understanding is Frank, who obviously picked uh, Connecticut, is the favorite in the betting back here right now on the staff here. So we'll wait and see about that. Let's go to uh, John Lindo standing by. John, good morning from Southern California. Good morning, Ralph. I tell you what, from the Padres and Dodgers at 3 a.m. to uh, late into the night with the NCAA, that's going to be a busy race book all day. Yeah, and there'll be a lot of people trying to catch a, a wink or two in between, that's for sure. But uh, busy with the adrenaline going, uh, that is for sure. Of course, uh, we should remind everybody that America's pastime, uh, Major League Baseball underway, as you said, as well. A lot of action, a lot going on at this time of the year. Oaklawn Park, you're doing a sheet there today. I know that every time you do a sheet at a racetrack at the beginning of the week, you kind of update the jockey trainer standings. And, John, i got to tell you that uh, folks uh, may uh, – I don't think they know much about the jockeys at Oaklawn, so what's up? Right. Uh, that's why we try and get the list there. If we haven't <coughs> excuse me, done the meet, Christian Torres is the leading rider at uh, Oaklawn. He's got <coughs> excuse me, 57 winners. Mm -hmm. Keith Asmussen having a big meet. He's got 36 wins. And Francisco Ariata is in third with 33. As far as the trainers, uh, Steve Asmussen is just dominant down there. He's got 51 wins at the meet already. Uh -huh. Robertino Diodoro second with 24. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Ken Mc Kenny McPeak has 21. And of course, uh, the favorites are they better? Are they more in line there than they are, obviously, in Southern California? <laughs> Yeah, a lot more toward average. We're talking 32% down ah, at Oakland Park. There we go. That's what I want to hear. That's for sure. Steve asked me, <clears> uh, second, second uh, trainer in the standings, he's over doubled up uh, their win percentages that there. So Steve and his son, of course, Keith, uh, riding, uh, having a hell of an Oakland meet, that's for sure. Tell me about the, uh, the feelings going into this meeting this morning. Well, the CHRP meeting goes around 930 our time. We'll be monitoring what happens there. And, you know, Ralph, I just think um, the guys have got to make a decision. The horse racing board needs to assign those dates, whether it be Northern California or Southern California. Somebody's feelings are going to get hurt, no doubt about that. But you can't move forward until you make a decision. I just think the worst thing they could do is sweep it under the rug and wait for another month or two. These people have lives, and they've got to decide where they're going to go and 
where they're going to set up shop. So let's get on with it and figure out what we're going to do. Yeah, you got, I mean, you got to bite the bullet one way or the other. There no more, there should be no more delays. Just make a decision and go with the ramifications from there. That's for sure. All right, uh, Mr. Lindo, we will uh, remind everybody that your Lindo report today for Oak Lawn Park is available right now at the uh, race book free of charge. And again, I want to remind you that the, uh, the Lindo Report covers all the races, selections in each race, suggested late pick four, and all the goody information we were just talking about. It's all on one comprehensive sheet, and that is the Lindo Report, available here uh, at the uh, South Point Race Book, free of charge, exclusively because they love horse players, and John as well. John, what do you got for us today at Oaklawn? Let's go to the fifth race at Oaklawn Park. In race number five, number five, Kiro De Niro came in from Prescott Downs, Tried dirt for the first time, and she is absolutely under wraps winning a maiden race there at Oaklawn. Steps up into a non-winners of two, which is the right level, going up against winners for the first time. Uh -huh. I think she's got some upside here. And at 15 to 1 on the morning line, I, I think she's got a chance to win right back. So number five, Kiero De Niro, race number five, Oaklawn Park. Boy, I'll give you a big W-O-W. -W. Wow, 15 to 1 on the morning line. If we can hold that and the gambling gods are shining on us, we're going to get a nice one in the fifth race today at Oaklawn, number five, Kiero De Niro. That uh, might very well give us mucho De Niro, that's for sure. The five in the fifth race today at Oaklawn is uh, John Lendo's pick. John, you be uh, charting that uh, meeting for us, and we will talk to you tomorrow. I'll let you know what happens, Ralph. Good luck today. You got it, my man. Thanks a lot. All right, now we're going to wrap it up with Jerry Jackwood standing by. Jerry, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. All right, what's this T-shirt say? It says, just like my country, young, <laughs> uh, scrappy, and uh, hungry. Young, scrappy, and hungry? I thought it might yeah, be young. Like I thought it might be young, scrappy, and happy, but never the case. Uh, way to go there, my man. It's, uh, the, um, it's the motto of Alexander Hamilton. Oh, okay. Alexander Hamilton, of course. Love his... You know, they, these, were the true, these were the patriots. They stood up for the Constitution. They stood up for everything. They put their lives on the line. That's right. That's and, by, and by the way, I love those pictures of Hamilton when they're in my hip pocket. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I like the Benjamin Center, but okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, why don't we see if we can get some Hamiltons today? What do you say? All right. Um, it may, you know, it's kind of a tight card, so maybe Hamilton's is what we're going for. Let's start with the sixth race today. I'm going to give you sort of what looks like a pop out, um, a lock em up type of Q type of bet. Good. The power page, this is what it suggests. I'm going to make a win bet on the one horse, Royal King. Maybe put it in this proportion $20 to win on the Royal King. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to do a reverse exact, um, then I'm going to do an exact of one five for maybe $10. And then I'm going to do a reverse exact uh, 5 1 for $25. Okay. So so, I like the one as a win bet. All right. Price. So the one is the key. That's the win bet. And the only punch is the five, Uncle George. So you got the one, five, and five, one more on one, five than five, one. And on your sheet, the top more rate. More on five, one than one, five, Ralph. You said that back. Oh, more on the five. Okay. And, and the reason is yeah. the five, which is the top rated horse, eight to five on the morning line, but the one which is a close second-rated horse, is 4-1 to one on the morning line. So you're looking for the value in this race with uh, the, the landing on the one for the win bet, right? Correct. I have the win bet. I have the 1-5 exact, and I'm offsetting it with a little bigger 5-1. That's correct. All right. Uh, give me a bonus play today. Well, this actually was my real play, my feature play, race number eight, number four, Victorious Way for Chris Engelhart. Unfortunately, he scratched an important horse in there, Chris Willis. So that'll scrunch our price down a little bit. But I think the four is a really good win bet in race number eight. I'm playing the four over the five, six, and seven, doing reverses just to break even. But the four, victorious way, that's our feature play. And a two to one or better, close to a pop out key. Okay, that's the eighth and final race today at Aqueduct. The four is the key. The uh, three, Chuck Willis, which was three to one on the morning line. And uh, the lukewarm favorite in that race at three to one has been scratched. But nevertheless, the four will still present uh, the uh, the key horse here, the four victorious wave. And the link ups will be five, six, seven and reverse two dollar ROI on the four. And as uh, Jerry keeps reminding us that uh, looking for value and how you place the wagers uh, in these races is uh, what the uh, the premium thing is all about. What that's, uh, the, that's the goal. That's for sure. Jerry J's power pages today for Aqueduct available right now at jerryjspowerpage.com. 
Well, it's starting to heat up here. Don't forget, folks, sports by the book. Don't go anywhere. Get a little something. Get your uh, fresh cup of coffee. Get a little something, maybe a donut, etc., and get ready. Stay right there on the South Point Studios Network at YouTube because Sports by the Book will be coming on early before these craziness start right here at 8.30. Uh, Jerry, you got one more thing to say, and say it quick. Have a great race day, everybody.